Mr. Pop. Eat. They don't want you to know what's going on. Because if you did, you would rebel. You would fight back. What I present is not good news. It will shock some and anger many. But it is necessary to help the past, present, and future victims of an agency which has ripped families apart for decades. I am talking about Child Protective Services. And I was one of their foot soldiers as a CPS investigator. Presently, there are over 400,000 children in out-of-home care and the protection of this organization. And therefore, I find it imperative to come out and expose the truth about what they are in order to atone for my sins. As an investigator, I was guilty of working for an organization that has hampered freedom throughout the United States and has caused millions of parents to live in fear. I was guilty of working for an agency that has done more to carry out the war on drugs than the war against child abuse. I'm guilty for working for an agency that was directly funded more for every child that was taken from a parent that treated children as a product, a product that was abused physically, sexually, and emotionally. I'm guilty of working for Child Protective Services. Through insight, historical analysis, experience, and interviews with top attorneys, family court judges, and victims, you will be exposed to the truth about what Child Protective Services is, and more importantly, the most thorough explanation of what to do if Child Protective Services comes after you and your family that has ever been produced. Hi, hello, this is uh, Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network every Thursday at 1 p.m. And you can also find me on theconsciousresistance.com and theseedsofliberty.com. So today we have Carlos Morales. I'm here at the Liberty Fest in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, glad to be here. Uh, and uh, so Carlos Morales just spoke about um, you know, the under, underworld of the CPS and uh, you know, all the horrors that are, have been attributed to that. He has a lot of inside information given that he used to work in CPS. So Carlos, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Uh, so please uh, tell us about what, you, what you're doing now and you know, since you left the organization. So yeah, uh, about actually at this point, two years ago, I uh, actually released a podcast. It was called CPS uh, Whistleblower Speaks Out. I was a child protective service investigator for over a year in the state of Texas. What I witnessed there was essentially the work of a terrorist organization who is routine, routinely uh, ripping out children out of homes for things like the parents using marijuana or for the child riding a, you know, around the block by themselves. Things that me and you would never call abuse. And the terrible thing about that was the fact that I recognized the fact that there was abuse going on all across the country. I consider the hitting of children, no matter what, to be abusive. They do not. In fact, many of the investigators that I spoke to believed in their minds somehow that if you do not hit your child, they're going to be spoiled proud. Same thing as people 40 or 50 years ago who said, if you do not hit your wife, she'll step out of the line. And maybe she'll get a job. <laughs> or maybe, at worst, she'll actually leave you. This is the mindset, though, that was going on in child protective services. 80% of the removals that are going on among the 410,000 children who are in CPS care right now are not for physical or sexual abuse. They are for negligence. Anywhere from 40 to 42% of that is for marijuana use. This is still going on in Colorado, Washington, and California, where weed is, for the most part, legal. Now, these kids who are being thrown in these homes are being regularly sexually and physically abused. They're seven to eight times more likely to be physically or sexually abused than impoverished children. 50% will end up homeless, they're three times more likely to put on psychotropic drugs, and they're six times more likely to die than if they stay in the decent household. And what this all is really coming down from is actually the incentive structure provided by CPS that has led to the terrible nature of it. So me and you, we both are well aware that any kind of course of monopoly is going to be unethical by its very nature. 
Now, whenever you add in the incentives that are provided by the nature of that, well, then you would have been in a terrible situation. A situation in which it almost becomes impossible to ever do the right thing because you'll get fired, right? Because it's going against the narrative that builds upon what is going on. What is the narrative of CPS? It's the same narrative of the government. The government has to protect us from ourselves by using violence. It, it's, it's often a contradictory notion. The government protects you by threatening your property, but it says it's doing it to protect your property. It threatens your life on a constant basis, and then it drums down and kills countless individuals. I mean, think about just the last 120 years of uh, communism. Over 100 to 150 million people have died due to this. What was communism supposed to provide for us? Safety, life, food. All these fuckers are starving. Utopia. <laughs> yeah, everything that they say they will do, they do the exact opposite. The same thing comes from CPS. And when you want to talk about incentives, um, take a look at the 1997 Safe Family Adoption Act. Listen to the word there. Safe Family Act. Happy. Fuck you. It's not about family at all. It's about removing of kids. You're granted four to six thousand dollars for every single child who is swiftly removed from a home, whether it's loving or not, into a new person's house, right? Now there are cases where there needs to be removal, but everything CPS does fucks it up. It's kind of like this. What are we going to do without CPS? Well, I think we'd be better off. Well, but kids are going to be abused. What are we going to do about those drug dealers without the DEA? I don't know. I don't like meth. You don't like meth. I don't think any of us are going to pick it up if it suddenly becomes legal. But we can get it prescribed to us, they prescribe it to the kids, and they call it Adderall, right? But for, for when I have this conversation, it always comes back to, well, what about the children? Well, that has been the most paternalistic bullshit excuse they've been using for 120 years, brought to us by the greatness that is progressivism. And as long as they can continue to say, your children will be threatened without us, they'll continue to win if we keep on believing their bullshit. And it's, it's shocking to me how many times I have to tell this to people before it starts knocking in your head. But when I think about the context of the position that I'm in right now, I'm some 28-year-old Puerto Rican from Texas with a sociology degree. Talk about mediocre. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck have I done in my life? Yet I'm the first ever whistleblower against them? And I'm the one championing this thing, and I started CPS Victim Support, which is a company that I, where I, I found on the hub. And he, by the way, my CPS Victim Support on Facebook, if you haven't already joined, um, where I help out other people for free doing all this work. And I had to write the book on it, Legally Connect the Case Against Child Protective Services. The first ever whistleblower account about child protective services and how evil they are. The first ever account, historically, of the agency where it's actually led. All put into one thing. Why the hell am I the one having to do this? It's crazy to me. And it's it's just kind of blown, blown me away, but none of this is a surprise because they've always been able to use the lie. The lie is they're here to protect. And the truth is, they've never done it from the beginning. You know, when you, when you think about the history of where CBS came from, progressivism, early 1900s, a bunch of British aristocracies weren't a big fan of all the immigrants who were starting to come in, much like Donald Trump. Now, for them, they viewed this as a problem, a genetic problem, because they thought that these people were genetically deficient and that they were by their very nature lazy, stupid, uh, that they needed to be controlled and that we needed to close the borders. You might have heard this guy named Stephen Mullivan. He's been basically plugging the same bullshit right now and trying to trickle that into uh, libertarian theory. And they had a plan, which was to work with the United States government to promote eugenics. By 1924 or 25, within the United States, 367 colleges promoted eugenics. The eugenics plan provided by, uh, done by Germany was actually started within the United States. There was 100,000 forced sterilizations in the United States from 1905 to 1974. It was still going on up until 1974. 100,000 forced sterilizations for the benefit of the children. Every single one of these genocides. How did they sell us on Iraq in 1993? For, uh, remember that, that bullshit Saudi Arabian woman who was saying, they were taking the babies out of the, and they, they just threw them on the floor, they killed the babies, right? Uh, she was actually Israeli, right? She had never been there. She was the daughter of, of, uh, of an Israeli, uh, Israeli lobbyist. I mean, these people were just lying. But they sold it to us. They're killing babies. We gotta go out there. The Nazis are killing babies. We gotta go out there. Now, the Nazis actually did it, these fucks. But the US actually kind of set up the, the situation for that to occur. Right. And they set up the plan to do it by great guys like Francis Galton, the uh, second cousin of Charles Darwin, who promoted eugenics. Margaret Sanger, the woman who started Planned Parenthood. Yeah. I have no problem with abortion. I have a lot of problems with Margaret Sanger. Yeah. 
who thought of black people as disgusting, degenerate savages. Mm -hmm. And they actually set up a lot of the first Planned Parenthood clinics all in black neighborhoods. And they promoted independence, free women. You can get away from your husband. That bullshit feminism is what she plugged to separate the family and destroy them so that the state could take over, which is completely horrible. And uh, this this has just been a been a it's it's hard to say it's a conspiracy because a lot of these things aren't that connected. But it's the mindset that is there that this is okay. So it's not a bunch of Jews in a cabal. It's not a bunch of child protective services in the cabal. It's the fact that the nature of the state provides incredibly terrible incentives that leads to where we are. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. When I first heard you on Anarchist, <clears throat> Jeff Berwick, and that really impressed me because, you, yeah, you never hear about CPS, you know, what's going on because nobody ever talks, right? And uh, and it's just amazing that you have all this information that is completely new to so many people. And what really impressed me was the majority of cases that you said um, that they that warranted removal was for like, you know, we are uh, too fat, too skinny, dr drug abuse, homeschoolers, you know, being yeah, home. That's the funny thing. Home, just. Homeschooling itself. itself. It's, it, what it's sucks is like I end up having to defend a lot of people that I wouldn't have to defend normally because of the goddamn state. Right, right. Christianity. I'm not a fan. Yeah. Anti-vaxxers. Not a fan. Right. That's not my thing. Vaccination is pretty sweet, right? right? But the kids shouldn't be removed. Right. You know? right. They shouldn't be placed in a situation. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, the, and the other, the other thing is that um, the, you know the, the case against government school is that you know, where do the CPS Ages go to talk to the kids in the government schools when the parents are not around. Yes, right? so you have to get them as a separate. Judah Parades portray 1696 British, fucking British people. <laughs> They've created so much great stuff, but man, progressivism sucks. Right. It's like this niche thing, right? Like, oh, thank you, Britain, for many literacy and a lot of other good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Bunch of other great inventions. Yeah. Um, fuck you for the whole like eugenics thing and massive genocide of Native Americans and everything. Else. Right. There's bad stuff everywhere. And I'm not a promoter of white guilt. Right, right, right. Like, black people should probably stop fucking hitting their kids. <laughs> Maybe that's lowering their IQ and screwing up their society. Or right. repeatedly getting divorced and having having kids outside of, not necessarily wedlock, but just outside of a stable relationship. Because right, right. single family households fuck up kids. Right. A lot of times. Not all the time. And they're not all estrogen babies and parasites. A lot of times what occurs is really terrible situations for everyone involved. But the state has exacerbated all of these things. The welfare state exacerbated every single one of these things. Every single thing they touch turns to shit, and they love it. I, I, I don't know what's going on in their heads right now, but when I watch Bernie Sanders give a speech and people applaud, I want to like piss on their faces. Communism kills! Like, what are you doing? Ah, oh. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you talk about uh, corporal punishment, spanking, and uh, yeah, that's a major thing. Peaceful parenting you know, goes along with homeschooling and unschooling and uh, yeah, know, all that and together. All that but yeah, like I was saying, though, how many protective people though, that I doesn't necessarily want to protect right. in the sense that you can, even if you do light spanking of a kid, which I'm not for, and I will state categorically I'm not for that, you're still way better off with a light spanking who loves the kid than a fucking foster home where they're getting raped. Right, right, right. Your sons of bitches. Like, I'm supposed to be professional in a lot of these scenarios, right? Like, I should have been cussed, I should have been nice, or fuck that, that's not. <laughs> the, 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 uh, that's not where you're painful, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and because I feel this passion in my heart, and it drives me insane that I have to get hundreds of emails every single day from people who want these cases, and I cannot answer every single day. Because I don't get paid for this. You know, like at first, I try to be an activist for a while and like live off donations and shit. I really hate asking for money. Right. Uh, I hate living off my lifestyle, so I ended up having to. I work 40 hours a week doing interior design. And then 30 to 40 hours a week answering emails and writing. And at some point, they're asleep. <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe exactly. late at some point. Hopefully. <laughs> forget, about, forget about relationship. <laughs> yeah, but so, hopefully, I can squeeze it in. Right. Right in. <laughs> oh, yeah, then they play music on weekends on top of that. See that? So, but that's the part, that's how you get late, right? So, you gotta have that. <laughs> yeah. So, tell me about the, the Libertarian Atheist Podcast. Right? Yeah, so Libertarian Atheist Podcast is a show I do with MK Lords. Right. Uh, she's known from Freedom Teens, Bitcoin, App Bomb. She also works for Airbits as a community manager. Incredibly smart human being. So I've been doing that for about five months now. It's been great. Uh, it's actually one of the most successful things I've ever done, which I was shocked by. It's been called the Libertarian Atheist Podcast. But what I was doing is I was always doing a topic of services. I was like, fuck, I'm so bored of talking about this subject. Uh, but it has to be set right. So I was like, how do we create this thing where it's like, you know what you're getting when you come in. It's not called CPS Victim Support, and I tell you, by the way, don't believe in God. Like, that just seems unfair, right? So I was like, hey, I would just call it a Libertarian Atheist Podcast. Let's say exactly what we are. And then... Being that blunt, people just kind of came in. They're like, oh, well, we, it's not just called Freedom, Liberty, 
caucus, red, polish, whatever, and then they talk about liberty, 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 liberty. We talk on topics of death, of using MDMA to deal with PTSD, which uh, one of my favorite things I ever wrote was how MDMA cured my PTSD. I wrote that for thinkaboutnow.com. And uh, it really did help me. I was dealing with a lot of issues uh, in my mind for everything that I did, but not only every single thing I did, but all the things I saw after I left. Talking to parents, having parents cry in their fucking arms, telling me the kid died. You know, that shit, that's a lot to take in. And this post-traumatic stress disorder thing isn't just for soldiers. It's not just for cops, it's for a lot of people who are dealing with a lot of emotional issues. So I bring up psychogenic, uh, empathetic drugs to uh, try to help and funnel and deal with these kind of situations. We did a whole series on the importance of critical thinking and why faith should never be held as a virtue. Why the biblical God or the Abraham God is described in the Bible, even if he was real, you should stab him because he's an asshole and he loves killing kids. Like, just trying to hit every single one of these ideas because it's not just about physical liberation, it's about mental liberation from God. Mm -hmm. And by educating and pushing yourself and empowering yourself forward by using the tools of the trivia, mm -hmm. uh, grammar, uh, logic, and rhetoric, and trying to figure out those. So I did a show with Richard Grove in which we kind of dabbled in to try to explain this is how you figure out what is true and what is false whenever you remove authority, whenever you remove the idea that you have to listen to someone else to tell you what is true and what is false. Here's the tools so you can educate and propel yourself forward. Because the state in this paternalistic way is just and it basically told us all that we're too dumb to understand philosophy. So they made it purposely convoluted. Plus, it's not that convoluted. If you, if you can, if I'm having a conversation with you and every single statement you make contradicts itself, and then you call that being deep, you're full of shit, right? But that's most Western, Western academia, academia, right? It's like, existence doesn't really exist, man. Well, then what are we talking about? That's a contradiction. What are you basing that off of? Well, things in the physical universe. Well, you just say there's a physical universe. So shut up. Like, stop this. Is this a left hand or a right hand? I don't know. You're not deep, you're just a pothead that's trying to get laid, you fucking male feminist. Like, all of this stuff is purposely coming to They do the same thing with economics, right? So, in, within economics, with the Federal Reserve and everything else, everything is repeatedly manipulated so we can never know what's actually going on. Um, but in truth, economics isn't actually that difficult to understand. Whether that be supply and demand, the, or the understanding of inflation, the very simple ideas of scarcity. If I keep printing money, that money is worth less. Crazy. But they, they go, no, 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 it's interest rates and this, no, 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 no. Like these are very, very basic ideas. Right. And that's why I recommend economics one lesson. Right. It's like that, you yeah. pick it up, you're good to go. You don't have to take 30 or 40 different courses on this unless you really want to specialize stuff. But they make it so convoluted that you can never truly educate yourself so instead you have to listen to the assholes telling you what is true and what is false. And I just don't like And I, and I, I don't want to propel that forward for anyone else because we have to respect individual sovereignty and enlightenment and, and ownership. In order to ever get this anarchy that we're preaching and wanting in, in life, right. we have to look at the individual first. And how can we do that? And that's why I also go into things like the sphere of influence. What is in your control? What can you actually handle? Should you be needlessly trying to promote Gary Johnson to lose again for the third fucking run so that he can not pay his workers and funnel tons and thousands and thousands of dollars to him? Should we do that for Rand Paul, who just sounds like Ronald Reagan times two, and it's going to do exactly what Ronald Reagan did whenever he gets into office? It'll be different. <laughs> It'll be different this time. Oh, I promise. I'm not going to rape you this time. No. These are all domestic abusers, and they're lying. <clears throat> and um, and I, I, I stand against that, that notion. So what is within your sphere of influence? My sphere of influence? This is what I went over in my speech today when I talked about death, which I went pretty fucking dark there. Mm -hmm. But in my speech, though, I kind of ended it with, within my sphere of influence, because of my child protective services were support, because the service CPS making support and I've created these channels for myself, it's in my, within my sphere of control to help out others within family court, educate, do these podcasts, do these other other people, though, might not be able to speak as quickly as I can, be able to deliver these kind of messages, and maybe they just want to live a good life and, and try to educate themselves the way they can. Good for you. I'm not going to give you shit, right? But if you're trying to get all these politicians forward and trying to end the Fed by electing some guy, even though every single possible economic incentive screams to not do that, right. <laughs> they're not going to do it. There's no God. <clears throat> no one's going to help you out with this, buddy. Like, there's going to be no great angel. There's going to be no great Jesus who's going to come here and take care of everything. It's not gonna happen. You gotta do shit in your own life. So I just question and wanna ask of everyone, what can you actually control of your life? Because if you dedicate to lot your life to those things which are outside of your control, it will inevitably lead to suffering. Because if, even if it does occur, you cannot take credit for it, not true credit for the actual thing you did. Mm -hmm. And if it fails, you just feel depressed. So either way, you can have it. <laughs>
I know I just chatted a lot and I'm speaking really quickly, but I do gotta go. No problem. I gotta All right. more All right. there. Thanks a lot. So just just yeah. put a plug so legallykidnap.net will find uh, my book, Legally Kidnapped the Case Against Child Protective Services. It's a short read, it's only three bucks for the ebook, it's eight bucks for the printed copy. I mean that's pretty cheap. Um, and then uh, I also run libertarian-atheist.com. It's a podcast. You can find it on automatic iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever else. And thinkaboutnow.com is a larger news aggregate website that I also run. That's kind of a side project. I'm building that up, but hopefully we'll get that going. And on Facebook, CPS Victim Support. We just threw a shit ton of stuff at you guys, uh, but uh, you can kind of find it all through there, and that's where the rewind button exists. So you can check it out. <laughs> and probably the little details in your YouTube. Excellent. So yeah, I'll put good. that there. Thanks a lot. So this is um, Peace Anarchism. On the Voluntary Virtues Network and thecitesofliberty.com and theconsciousresistance.com. Uh, wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Thanks, folks. Bye.